It could cover a quarter of Swansea Bay, from the dock area east to where the university's new science campus is now being built. 16 turbines 7 metre in diameter would be placed in a concrete lock to catch the world's second highest tide rushing in from the Atlantic Ocean. If the scheme is approved, power could be produced for up to 16 hours a day. The first lagoon needs a kick start, but really this is about launching an industry and the, the lagoons that will come up the Severn and into Liverpool Bay after this first lagoon, their price will be cheaper than nuclear power and will last for 120 years. So the money's there to build the lagoon. Uh, the, our last remaining challenge is we do need to achieve the correct subsidy level from the British government. To generate a cleaner source of power for electricity, Tidal Lagoon Power is asking for government subsidy for around 30 years. Last year, EDF Energy, developing a new nuclear power plant in Hinkley, Somerset, secured £92.50 per megawatt hour of energy after 2023. Large solar parks will attract government support of £120 per megawatt hour. Wind farms on land typically are offered £95, while wind turbines out to sea are in a higher bracket for the power they generate, £155 per megawatt hour of energy. Offshore wind is the nearest comparison to the proposed tidal lagoon in Swansea. The developers are asking for an electricity strike price of between 155 and 164 pounds per megawatt hour. But some claim this scheme will produce energy which will be far more expensive. The Swansea Bay tidal lagoon is fine for Swansea Bay, but it's 1,500 football pitches in size. You'd need 50 of them to generate a fraction of the power of the Seven Barrage. Swansea and Neath Portalbot councils have three months to offer an opinion on the plans. The planning inspectorate will look at this proposal for up to a year. The final decision will rest with Ed Davey, the energy minister in Westminster.